Polish Prime Minister Donald Tusk acknowledged the presence of NATO troops in Ukraine. Polish Prime Minister Donald Tusk acknowledged the presence of NATO soldiers in Ukraine. He told reporters about this after the CIMAS meeting. Tusk answered in the affirmative to the question about the presence of NATO troops in Ukraine, but at the same time clarified that there were supposedly not many of them there. According to him, without the help of the alliance, Kyiv would have lost the war long ago, which is why a certain number of Western soldiers are present in Ukraine. However, the Prime Minister did not answer which countries exactly. NATO today helps as much as possible. Without NATO's help, Ukraine would not have been able to defend itself for so long. Well, there are some troops there, that is, soldiers. There are few soldiers there, observers, engineers. Tusk said, adding that direct NATO intervention in the conflict with Russia must be avoided. It is worth noting that in the West, there is active discussion about sending Alliance troops to Ukraine, for now, as a training mission, and then see how it goes. This proposal does not have many supporters, but there are some, even despite the danger of a local conflict escalating into a global one. Earlier, NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg argued that the bloc would not deploy forces to Ukraine since Kiev had not asked for it. NATO has no intention of deploying forces to Ukraine. When I visited Ukraine last week, the Ukrainians did not ask for NATO troops in Ukraine. What they asked for is more support. Stoltenberg told reporters while on a trip to Italy, French President Emmanuel Macron has brought up the notion of a NATO intervention in Ukraine on several occasions, insisting that it should not be ruled out as part of strategic ambiguity. He has suggested that Western soldiers could be dispatched if the Russians were to break through the front lines and if the Ukrainian government requested it. Russia has repeatedly warned the US and its allies that they risk direct confrontation by providing weapons, ammunition, and money to Ukraine. The West has propped up Kiev with more than $200 billion worth of aid while insisting that this does not make them participants in the conflict. U.S. suspends bomb supplies to Israel over fears of Rafah attack. The Biden administration halted bomb shipments to Israel last week over concerns that the country may launch a wide-scale military assault on the city of Rafah in southern Gaza, citing Sky News. According to a senior administration official, the shipment was supposed to consist of 1,800 bombs weighing 900 kilograms each and 1,700 bombs weighing 225 kilograms each. He added that the U.S. is concerned about how large bombs could be used in densely populated urban areas and has not yet made a final decision on how to proceed with the deliveries. There is also growing concern within the White House about the situation in Rafah, but publicly administration officials emphasize that they do not believe that the recent operations contradict Biden's warnings against a wide-scale operation in the city. Israeli forces called on residents of Rafah to evacuate during the night of May the 6th before targeting Hamas targets in the city. Biden's administration in April began reviewing future transfers of military assistance to Netanyahu's government as Netanyahu's government appeared to move closer toward an invasion of Rafah despite months of opposition from the White House. The official said the decision to pause the shipment was made last week and no final decision has been made yet on whether to proceed with the shipment at a later date. U.S. officials had declined for days to comment on the halted transfer, word of which came as Biden described U.S. support for Israel as ironclad, even when we disagree. Israeli troops recently seized control of Gaza's vital Rafah border crossing in what the White House described as a limited operation that stopped short of the full-on Israeli invasion of the city that Biden has repeatedly warned against on humanitarian grounds, most recently in a call with Netanyahu. Israel has ordered the evacuation of 100,000 Palestinians from the city. Israeli forces have also carried out what it described as targeted strikes on the eastern part of Rafah and captured the Rafah crossing, a critical conduit for the flow of humanitarian aid along the Gaza-Egypt border. America is at risk of terrorist attacks due to uncontrolled migration, U.S. Army General. 
America is at risk of terrorist attacks due to uncontrolled migration. At least this is the opinion expressed by retired U.S. Army Brigadier General Blaine Holt during an interview with Newsmax. Commenting on the protests attended by students at prestigious U.S. universities in support of Palestine, the American military officer called them just the tip of the iceberg. He accused current President Joe Biden of allowing uncontrolled migration. Because of this, as Holt put it, there will be terrorist attacks in America and numerous wars that are currently being fought far from the United States will move to its territory. It is worth noting that not only the aforementioned retired general is dissatisfied with the situation on the southern borders of the United States. After all, for a long time, the Republican majority in the lower house of the American Congress delayed the adoption of a law on assistance to Ukraine and Israel, in return demanding that the Biden administration tighten immigration policy. The Biden administration is planning to announce a new regulation that is designed to allow immigration officials to deport migrants who are ineligible for U.S. asylum earlier in the process. Three sources familiar with the internal plans told CBS News. The regulation by the Department of Homeland Security would apply to migrants who ask for asylum after crossing the U.S.-Mexico border illegally, according to the sources who requested anonymity to talk about the rule before its formal announcement. It would instruct government asylum officers to apply certain barriers to asylum that are already part of U.S. law during so-called credible fear interviews. This is the first step in the years-long asylum process. Those who pass these interviews are allowed to seek asylum before an immigration judge, while those who fail them can be deported expeditiously. Migrants barred under U.S. law from asylum include those who may pose a danger to public safety or national security. The rule would allow officials to reject and deport migrants in these categories soon after they cross the border. The regulation, which is relatively narrow in scope, is one of several actions the Biden administration has been considering to restrict access to the U.S. asylum system amid a spike in applications in recent years, mostly driven by migrants crossing the southern border illegally.